In this video, I'll show you my solution for displaying damage numbers in 3D. There are a few tutorials out there for damage numbers for 2D games, but I found them difficult to translate into 3D and their approach is slightly different from mine. If you find this helpful, please subscribe, so let's slide in. So let's start by going over the damage number scene, that's just a node 3D with a script attached to it. Then I have animation player that controls the anchor and the label and then select label 3d and under flags you can see i have billboard enabled this makes it always face in my direction there's also y billboard and this makes it only face you in the y direction make sure the render priority is higher than the outline render priority otherwise if it's equal or less the black can get in front of it so you can see it may get black in some cases and then just increase the render priority to be something higher, so 127. Then if I go down to the text property and modulate, we have the color, uh, which I animate. Then I have the outline, which I also animate. And in the text, you can just put anything because I control this through the script later. Then I also change the font size and outline size. You can change these to whatever fits your game best. So that's about it for the label 3D. So let's go over how I animate them. So at zero seconds, everything is transparent. Then I animate the alpha of the modulates, both for the outline and for the modulate. And that's animating the alpha of them from zero to 255. Then I keep it at that for 0.2 seconds. And then from 0.4 to 0.6, I make them go back to transparent. And yes, to make sure that the animations are going smoothly, I like enabling the cubic interpolation instead of the linear. So select the cubic on both of them. And that's how I animate the colors. Then I also have anchor above them, which is for changing the position of them. They start off at default values and then they go up 0.1 in the y direction and then they go back to the default position at 0.3 and then they stay there and fade out. So it gives a nice bounce effect. I also give this a cubic interpolation because on linear it will look pretty bad. It just goes up and down. Cubic just makes everything smooth. And then I also call a function inside of the animation when it's finished. After I go over the script, I can show you how to add the function in the animation. So let's open up the script on the damage number and close the animation. So here I have made my own function and I've called it set and play. I set the animation and I play it depending on a value I give it and the label 3d's text is equal to the string and the string of text is the value i pass through so i can tell it it's 50 and it will say 50 and i've right clicked on my label 3d and make it unique name and that way i can just drag it into the script and it will have percentage and label 3d and then as you can see i have a bunch of different animations that's for different colors let's see i have a white one I have a yellow one that's after that, a red one, I'm just kidding, orange one comes before that, and then a red one. And that's depending on the damage you deal in the game, but you could ignore these ones if you're not adding more than that. And if you're not adding more than that, you could just have like this. So if you only have one animation and you wanna play that animation, I would also right click on the animation player and access as unique name, drag it into the script and play the animation just like this. Then I just have another function which I call in the animation player which Q frees it. This basically just removes it from the scene after it's done playing. And let's go back to the animation player so I can show you how it's done. So you hit add track and then you do call method track. And you select the node with the script attached to it and then you get an empty field here which you can move the cursor around to the point you want the function to be called i want it to be called at the end then you just right click and insert key and then you get all the functions you could call i want to call the void remove and then you just hit open and it's added and that's how that's done i'm gonna save that and 
let's go to the goblin scene in here let's go to the 3d view i have my goblin and under the skeleton 3d you can attach bone attachments which are connected to a specific bone of the character mine is connected to the top of the head so for me it's called head top and that's a bone attachment 3d attached to the skeleton 3d you do the same for attaching weapons so i have this club right here it's done the exact same way and for the head attachment i've just renamed it but it's actually bone attachment and you can see that it follows the animation when it's playing so if i shoot it when it's leaning over to the side it will still pop up over the head and then as a child of that i have a marker 3d a marker 3d is similar to a node 3d and i only use it for the position and it's at seven meters you can change the position of it to match something that you like above the head i would then pause the animation of the goblin so let's see if we can find the one that's playing the animation move it a little bit over the head and put the marker 3d there just like i've done see like this and then right click the mark 3d and access as unique name as well then go up to the script connected to the goblin so i'm now in the goblin script and i have two variables here one for the damage numbers so dmg numbers this is when i instantiate it and then i have another one for the damage numbers and this is a preload of the scene so that's basically just search for damage numbers and let's see numbers then you select it while holding control and let's make a new line here so hold control and select it and drag it into the script and that will give you a preload of it it could actually be a constant so you can keep it as a constant because it won't change unless you change the path of it and then you get the path and the preload everything good and handy then later in the code the dmg numbers equal to the damage numbers and then i instantiate it then i get the parent and i add the child and I add the damage numbers which i instantiated and it's just added to the scene then at whatever default position it gets and then after i add it i need to make the global position of it equal to the marker 3d this is the one we attach to the bone attachment and its global position I handle headshots and also different types of goblins, but all you're gonna need is this line of code. In the function that you handle the damage, since I made the DMG numbers equal to the damage numbers, which is the scene, that scene had the script attached to it. And since it's equal to that, I can play a function and to play the function I need to do dot after and then I can type the function so it's set and play and then parentheses and then I pass through a value and it wanted to re receive a value and here it gets a little bit complicated the value that gets passed to the hit function which is the damage it takes I just passed that along to the value in the set and play and this was for headshots but you can just do that because in my game headshots deal twice the damage you could also enter let's say maybe you want to deal 10 damage all the time so now it will play 10 if it gets hit this is probably a little bit complicated for a beginner but i found this method to be a lot easier than other tutorials on the topic because they were controlling the animations for code and my brain don't really work like that let's show you how it looks so if i launch the world one level one and i start to wave and the goblin's gonna start coming out and if i shoot at them it shows yellow in the headshot and it shows white on the body shots one benefits of adding it to the parent is because when i kill the goblins they get queued free as well so if i add it to the parent and they stick around even after the goblins is gone so the number sticks around and i heard somewhere about the game vampire survivors that it's addictive because numbers and flashing so that's probably some truth in that because i like the numbers 
if you were to do this you could get orange numbers yeah i hope it wasn't too overly complicated and still understandable thanks for watching and special thanks to the kofa members for making this video possible if you want to support my work and have your name be featured in future videos check out my ko-fi in the description and i'll see you in the next one